This is section 4.6, graph sketching. So in this video, we're going to go through an example problem. It's really similar to number 15 in your book. It gives us this function. It's asking us to find all these things and at the end, sketch a graph of this function. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that it's asking for are our transition points. That's just our critical points and our points of inflection. So remember critical points, wherever the first derivative equals zero. So we take the derivative of this function and we get this value. And to find our critical points, we just set it equal to zero and solve for x. To solve for x here, I'm going to take out my greatest common factor, which is 2x. That leaves me with 6 minus x equals zero. Set both of these terms equal to zero, and you get that x is equal to zero and positive 6. And these are my critical points. Okay, but since I know I'm going to be sketching this graph later, I'm going to go ahead and plug these critical points into my uh, original function so that I have actual points to plot on my function, or on my graph. When I plug 0 in, I get the point 0, 0. When I plug 6 in, I end up getting the point 6, 72. All right, so I have my critical points, have some points that I can plot on my graph. Uh, my next point, my next transition point that I'm going to find are my points of inflection. And remember, that's wherever the second derivative equals 0. When I solve for the second derivative, I get 12 minus 4x, setting that equal to 0 you get that x is equal to positive 3. And when you plug that in to your into your original function, you get the coordinate 3, 36. So here are my critical points. Here are my points of inflection. Transition points are done. OK, next thing they're asking me for are the intervals of increasing and decreasing and the interval of concavity. So I'm going to do this a little bit differently, maybe, than we have been in previous sections. I'm going to make one number line with both my critical points and my points of inflection on it. So I have 0, 3, and 6, my two critical points and my point of inflection. I'm going to plug in test values of each interval into both my uh, first derivative and my second derivative. So let's try the points x equals negative 1, x equals positive 1, x equals 4, maybe x equals 10. So let's plug that into our first derivative, see what happens. When I plug negative 1 into my first derivative, remember, you can plug it into this factored form so that it's easier to see what the sign is of your first derivative. If I plug negative 1 into this factored form, I get negative 2 times 6 minus a negative 1 will be a positive number. Negative times a positive gives me negative. When I plug positive 1 in here, I'll get a positive times a positive. That gives me positive. Plug a 4 in, positive times a positive, also positive. Plug in a 10, positive times a negative will give me negative. Now I'll do the same thing with my second derivative. Plug in negative 1 into my second derivative, 12 minus a negative 4, that'll be positive. Plug in a positive 1 into my second derivative, gives me positive. When I plug in a 4, I get 12 minus 16, that'll be negative. And plug in a 10, 12 minus 40, that'll be negative as well. And this is what we would expect to happen, right? For our first derivative, the sign changed at each of the critical points, which is generally what happens. And for our second derivative, the sign changed at our point of inflection, which generally is what happens. All right, so we did that. And now what we're going to do next is we're going to see what our function f of x looks like so that it's easier to sketch out on a graph. So here, I know that it's concave up and that it's decreasing. So concave up looks like this. Decreasing, I know, means that it's going down. So what I'm going to do is look on my concave up shape, look at which half is going down. And I see that it's this half right here. So I know that f of x looks something like this on this interval. Same thing here, concave up, and it's increasing now. Now it's going to look like the second half of the concave up. So it looks like this. And when it's concave down, it's this um, upside down U shape. If it's increasing, it's concave down, it's going to look like this half, because this is the increasing half, right? So my function looks like that. And when it's decreasing and concave down, it's going to look like this second half. It'll look like that shape. OK, so I have my increasing, decreasing intervals, my concavity. I know what my original function looks like. Before I sketch it, I'm going to find the last part, the asymptotes. So remember, you have both vertical and horizontal asymptotes. The way to find your horizontal asymptotes is to solve this function as a limit as x approaches infinity. 
So remember, uh, for limits as x approaches infinity, when it's written like this and there's no fractions, a good way to solve this is to just think about what would happen. Uh, if, we, uh, if we plug in a really big number, if we plug in positive infinity into this function, what do we get? We get infinity squared minus infinity cubed. This will leave us with a negative infinity. So as x approaches positive infinity, our graph is approaching negative infinity. It's going to keep on decreasing forever. On the other hand, if we plug in or if we try the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x, if we were to plug in negative infinity into here, we get negative infinity squared minus a negative infinity cubed. Uh, negative infinity squared gives us positive infinity. This will end up being minus a negative infinity. So positive infinity plus an infinity gives us positive infinity. So that means as our x's are approaching the negative infinity side, our graph is approaching positive infinity. So it's going up forever. All right, last part. To find our vertical asymptotes, we just look to see where this function is undefined. In this case, it's never undefined. We could plug in any x value we want, and we get a valid answer. Now, if this uh, function had a fraction in it, you'd want to see where the denominator is equal to 0 to see where the vertical asymptotes are. Because remember, you can't divide by 0. If denominator is 0, undefined, can't work, that would be a vertical asymptote. In this case, though, there's no vertical asymptotes. OK, that was the last part. We found our asymptotes. Now we're ready to go ahead, graph this function. So I'll draw a mini function, or mini graph right here. Remember, I have a couple points that I can actually plot. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I have the point 0, 0, and the point 6, 72 is right here. And I have the point 336. Here's 3. This is now 36. And from here, I'm just going to fill in what this uh, chart is telling me for each of these intervals. So I know from negative infinity to 0, my graph looks like this. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in. And from 0 to 3, my graph looks like this, concave up, and it's increasing. But then at 3, it's still increasing, but now it changes concavity. So instead of going up like this, it's going to go up like this. Oh, this was poor planning. Let me erase this. <laughs> and then on my next interval, from 6 to infinity, um, it's, de it's still concave down, but now it's decreasing. So now it's going to go down like that forever. And let me add an arrow. And that's about it. If you go through each of these um, intervals of increasing, decreasing, and concavity, you can see that it's there on our graph. And it also matches our horizontal asymptotes. As x is going to negative infinity, um, our graph is going to positive infinity. And it's the opposite as x is approaching positive infinity. But other than that, that's about it. This was a pretty long process. But once you do it a couple times, it becomes easier and easier. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You can either schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.